okay uh, in this uh, in today's video we are going to discuss how to generate this SPWM signal that we can use to drive our MOSFET you know for you to generate an pure sine wave inverter for you to program a pure sine wave inverter first you need to understand how the pure sine wave how it is being generated okay so this is the signal that we are expecting from our output of our inverter so now let's discuss how this spwm which is sinusoidal pulse width modulation sinusoidal pulse width modulation so let's discuss how we can generate that so in order to generate this spwm first we need to understand what the ccp does in a microcontroller before talking about designing an inverter a pure sine wave inverter first of all you have to look at the microcontroller which you will use for the programming if it has this module called ccp so this ccp simply means captured compare pwm it is a three different module it is a module that have three different mode in a microcontroller so this module if you want to capture or compare or pwm you have to choose the mode which this mode uh, module will work on the microcontroller so for us what we are doing now we are working with the pwm so we have to configure that module to work in pwm mode by assigning some values in the register of the microcontroller so let's assume we know how to assign those values which i will still show you how to do that in the software aspect but now let me let's first of all understand how this pure sine wave the spwm how we can generate it now if you look at this signal you can see this is our final output signal which is our two thirds this is our final uh, voltage this is the signal we are expecting from our output now for you to understand how this spwm work how we can generate it this is how it works this is the first curve of the sine wave why this is the second curve which is this is the positive voltage and this is the negative voltage and we know that our microcontroller cannot produce a negative voltage okay so we are using two different pin if you look at it, you see where i assigned the, the two different pin assigned to the to the module we are using so the pin 13 of the microcontroller we are using is ccp1 y pin 2f is the ccp2 so these two pin the first pin will generate the first curve of the sine wave while the other pin will generate the opposite curve but note that this opposite curve is not a negative voltage the both curves are positive because microcontroller cannot give you a negative voltage microcontroller can only give you zero volts to five volts okay so the negative curve we are getting we will get it from our transformer because you know the way transformer works transformer only gives an output voltage when the input is alternating when you apply an alternative current or alternating current it will give you a voltage either step up voltage or step a step down voltage depending on the configuration you are working on okay but we are not here to discuss about the transformer we are here to discuss about this spwm so now for us to generate this pure sine wave we need to understand we need to know the, the amount of entries now in pure sine wave there is what we call 
which is very very important in you know programming a to program a pure sine wave that is that is this thing that we need to bear in mind that is very very important while working with inverter first of all we need to understand the adc secondly we understand the timer and the interrupt so now what we are going to do now we are going to generate a carrier frequency so what is this carrier frequency this carrier frequency simply means the amount of time we want to update our duty cycle register to form this curve okay we can you know if you look at this curve this is a pulse this is a triangular uh, uh, waveform this is a tri triangular waveform a pulse look at it here you can see it so in order to generate this this curve we are seeing we need to be changing the duty cycle and the duty cycle change you know whenever you are talking about changing the duty cycle we are talking about changing the voltage levels so if if this curve can start at zero uh, zero level voltage to the to the maximum voltage which is in the final output which is 230 but we are discussing about the the final voltage of the from the microcontroller which is 5 volts so for us to generate this curve now we need to be increasing our duty cycle or uh, decreasing our duty cycle to form this curve okay so before we determine that curve first of all we need to know the amount of pulses we need to generate these pulses we need to know the amount of pulses we need to generate to generate to create this curve and to maintain a 50 hertz or 60 hertz uh, frequency from our output transformer so the formula for that is this in order to gen to know the, the amount of uh, samples we call these samples the amount of samples we will do we will divide our carrier frequency by the modulating frequency so our carrier frequency is 10 kilohertz depending on the frequency you want to operate on you can operate at 20 kilohertz depending on what your microcontroller can handle and what your microcontroller can generate so for the sake of the microcontroller we are using for this this course I will reduce it to 10 kilohertz. So I want to generate a 10 kilohertz sample, which will finally give me my output with a frequency of 50 hertz. If you look at this first curve, this first curve simplifies one hertz. A completion of this curve simplifies one hertz. When you have this one curve, this complete curve up to 50, that is what we are calling 50 hertz. Okay, so I'm just using this one curve to show you how we can generate these uh, samples. So if you divide this 10 kilohertz by 50 hertz, it will give you the, the amount of samples we need to create this curve. So if you say 20, uh, 10,000 divided by 50, we are going to get uh, 200. So 200, so for us to complete this full cycle, we need 200 samples. To complete this full circle, uh, this full waveform, okay. But now we know that in our microcontroller, our microcontroller cannot generate this full waveform, so we need to do some manipulation for us to get this full wave curve. So what we are going to do now, we are going to take the half of this curve. So this half of this curve will will produce half of this curve in one pin. Then the other half of the curve we produce it in the other pin. That is how we are going to be able to generate this sine curve. Okay. So since we know that to get this full curve we need 200 samples. So and this 200 sample we need to divide it by two because we are we are generating one curve from each of the pin. So pin 13 we are going to generate this curve. Pin 12 we generate this curve. So what we are going to do divide this the number of samples into two which is if we divide 200 by 2 we are going to get 100 so we need 100 samples from here from one pin then 100 samples in the other pin to create this curve okay so now since we have known the the amount of samples we need 
then how do we generate this curve? If you look at this curve, you can see that this curve is starting from zero voltage, rises to the to the v, uh, to the to the maximum to the peak to the peak of the voltage. From it, it will start reducing. Just look at the way the curve looks like. You can see this is a rising voltage. Okay, this is a rising voltage. At this point, this voltage will start decreasing back to zero before switching over to the next pin. In this middle, we call this middle, we call this middle here, zero crossing. The reason why we call it zero crossing is at this point is when the inverter will now switch from this particular pin to the other pin. That is why it is called zero crossing. So now, back to what we are saying. This is a rising voltage. This curve is a rising voltage. Okay? At this point now, look at here. Look at at this point, which is angle 90. This is an, 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 an angle 90. This is angle 180. And this is angle 360. So angle 360 is the full wave curve. So we need to generate an angle 90 curve. Because this angle 90 is a rising voltage. We need to increase the voltage. Once the voltage reaches to 90 degree, we start decreasing it to form this curve. Because this curve is starting from here. Rising to the angle 90. After angle 90, the voltage will start decreasing. You can see it. The voltage will not decrease. So once it reaches to this cross section, it will now switch over to the other pin. So how do we do it now? In this full curve now that we are, we say that we are going to generate 100 samples. We are going to divide these 100 samples by 2, which is we are going to get 50. Because we want to generate a rising voltage of angle 90. So we want, if we generate this curve, once it reaches to angle 90, we will start decreasing the voltage. And how do we increase this voltage and decrease it is by using our uh, duty cycle register on our microcontroller. So, you know, when we are talking about voltage level, we are talking about duty cycle. So, when you are increasing your duty cycle, duty cycle, you are increasing the voltage. And when you are decreasing the duty cycle, you are decreasing the voltage. Okay? So, in order to create half of this waveform, we need to increase our duty cycle to 90 degree. Once we are up to 90 degree, we start decreasing our duty cycle. So in order to do that, we need an, a software which will generate this curve. Okay. So in that software, now, in that software, there's things that we need to consider. Our timer, we are using an 8-bit microcontroller. And this 8-bit microcontroller, the, the amount of number you can send to the register is a uh, 255. Likewise, the timer, the timer we are going to use. So, the timer that is associated to this P, uh, this uh, PWM module in our microcontroller is timer two, and this timer two is an eight bit timer. Okay, that means the only number we can send is 255. So, in order to generate 10 kilohertz. We need every 10 kilohertz. We should be updating our duty cycle. So for every 10 kilohertz, we will get an interrupt, which will, will make our microcontroller to leave whatever is doing to attend to attend to that uh, uh, that interrupt that just occur. So we want at this first stage now. This is the first sample we are sending to our our duty cycle register. So after 10 kilohertz, after 10 kilohertz of timing, because timing means you are timing, we are counting. So we want to count from 1 to 10,000. Once it reaches to 10,000, an interrupt will occur. So we are starting at this uh, uh, first point here. So the timer will start counting. Once the timer counts to 10,000, the timer will now send an interrupt our microcontroller will now go to our interrupt and see on that that our interrupt we will now send an increase in our duty cycle which will go to this particular level here okay so if our duty cycle is zero if we send zero value to our duty cycle register then after 
10,000 uh, 10, counts will send another value, maybe 10. So this that's why for you to get a clean, pure curve, the more you have number of entries, the more the curve, the more pure curve you have. Because this curve, these entries that we are, we are sending to our, our duty cycle will determine how curve this our, uh, our sine wave will look like. Okay? So, I know this might be confusing, but in our software part, you will understand how this thing works, how to generate this. But what I want you to bear in mind is that in our timer, the highest value we can send to our timer is 255. Okay? In that 255, we are going to divide it by 2. Maybe let's say we will send 125. So, in this software that I'm going to show you now, that is what we are going to use to generate these samples, this curve now. So, we are working with angle 90, which we are trying to say we are going, we are generating half of this curve now. Half of this curve is angle 90. So, once from zero, uh, from zero level voltage, once it reaches to nine, angle 90, we will start decreasing our duty cycle. So, we want, we are working with angle 90, and the total amount of entries we need is 125. We will leave the other half for feedback so that we will use it for feedback in our in our inverter. Okay. So once we we need the feedback, we will use the remaining part to complete complete it because we can't exceed this number. This is the maximum number we need. So we need to divide it into two. Use the half to generate this curve. Then when we need a feedback, maybe the our voltage drop. Then we can also increase our duty cycle so that it will maintain the that output voltage. So in that software, what we are going to do now, since we are using a 50 sample to generate half of this, this is quarter. Okay, this is 180 degree, right? So we are using the quarter of the 120 degree or half of it. So we are going to use we are going to use 50 sample at angle 90. And our maximum uh, entries we need is 125, which will be fed to the... This 125 is what will be fed to the, our duty cycle register, okay? This is the value we will, because once you, you send this value to 125, that means our duty cycle will be half, half turned on, half turned off, okay? So that is what we are going to do. So we are working with 125, 90 degree and 50 entries so let's move over to the software let me see, show you how we can generate this half of this curve then uh, i'll also show you how to set up the the uh, the sign table and how to send the, those values to to our pit to this pin to generate this this curve uh, to generate this spwm signal okay this signal is for the pin 13 why this signal is pin uh, pin 12 so for you to get this thing that means you have to filter it out that's why in an inverter you see they use capacitor or inductor to filter the final output to get this curve so let me take you over to the software and show you how it's done